Monte Cristo Medianoche in Robusto. Hey everybody, I'm Abel Key and this is Cigar Vlog. So check this out, Monte Cristo, one of those old Cuban brands that uh, kind of skedaddled it on the green, greener pastures when uh, the revolution happened. And eventually they they got... They do still operate a factory in Cuba, but there's also, I think, a Dominican factory? Is it a Dominican or Honduran? I'll have to check that later. Anyway, it uh, kind of escapes me at the moment, by the way. But uh, I do believe that they got out, uh, bought. I really, believe I do believe that they got bought out by General Cigar, and them, along with a couple of other brands like H. Upman and Romeo y Julieta, uh, they all kind of fall under this big banner. Some of these standing over there, listening to me talk to my phone like an idiot. But anyway, they all got sucked under this uh, big banner, and now they're doing this media noche thing, so you can find Monte Cristos, Romeos and others with this really, really dark Maduro wrapper. Why are you not focusing, phone? Thank you. Okay. Every so often, phone likes to focus on the branch it's sitting on instead of the cigar that it's supposed to be looking at. Okay, get you here, and kaboom. That's a little shallow. Yeah, that's all right. But anyway, you'll find it's either General Cigar or Altadis. I ended up uh, buying out a number of older Cuban brands that, as I said, still operate factories in Cuba, but at the same time are still wanting to uh, sell to the largest cigar market in the world, being the U.S., so they operate a number of factories around the world, and they get financial backing from this big, huge kind of conglomerate thing. We're capable of still getting nice old-school cigars that are still completely legal. All right, well, straight off the bat, very smooth, no harshness, maybe a subtle spice, maybe, not entirely sure. A little sweet, a little clean tobacco. Nice, mellow, good start. All right. Hmm. A little subtle at the moment. Hopefully, this will wake up in uh, the first inch and get a little bit more definitive, uh, definite flavor profile. All right, I'm gonna smoke this down one inch, and I'll update you from there. All right, about one inch in. I've noticed. A very pronounced earthy note, as well as a discernible coffiness. Coffiness? Co is that it? That's not even a word. Coffee-ish flavor. <laughs> uh, a little bit of a subtle cinnamon. Not so much sweet, but it's something a little bit of a spiciness to it, kind of like a holiday cinnamon spice. A lot of coffee notes. Uh, earthy, earthy tobacco. The retro hell notes has this kind of uh, toasty cinnamony quality to it. And here comes a bicyclist. Never fails to get out here on a nice day. Everybody has to walk the dog, or go for a run, or ride the bike, or do all kinds of other things that puts people I don't want in my video. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Anyway, so far the only real issue that I've noticed about this is a slightly snug draw. And I think that this one just got rolled a little tight. Otherwise, construction seems to be particularly good. And I mean, it's a Monte Cristo, so it better be. Overall though, Definitely strike me as an excellent coffee cigar. Although I do need to be careful to make sure I don't end up getting tar balls, because I think I maybe need to cut this down just a wee hair more. Okay, anyway. I know I'm noticing a little bit of a tarriness to this, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Uh, hopefully that won't end up being an issue as it smokes down. So anyway, I'm gonna smoke this down to halfway point, trim it a little bit more off the head, and uh, see if I can kind of Loosen up that draw a little bit, and hopefully not get a little, a little uh, yuck at the, uh, well, the business end, shall we say. All right. Real quick mini update. I did, I did trim a little bit more off the head. Echo. Uh, I, I trimmed a little bit more off, and that did cause the ash to fall off prematurely. 
Uh, keep in mind, this is Monte Cristo, so I'm not going to hold that against the uh, construction of the uh, overall stake if it doesn't quite have as long an ash profile, shall we say. And yeah, I use the ash to determine the actual uh, structural integrity of the cigar. If it, hold, if it holds on for about halfway, then you got a good cigar, or at least a well-constructed one. Anyway, they did fix the draw. I will spit a lot of stuff in my mouth, so I'm going to spit that out off camera. Okay, well, I figure this is about as good a halfway point as any, considering the fact that the ash just legit fell off, probably because I had to touch it up a little bit. I was kind of thinking of him hauling around and kind of not paying attention, and, well, I kind of had to give it a little touch up because it was kind of going out on me. Whoops! <laughs> Overall, though, try to avoid too much echo here, uh, I have noticed uh, the oral flavor profile, very coffee heavy, a little bit of cocoa, especially in the retro hill. Retro has got a kind of cinnamony, but very kind of dark chocolate note to it, which is actually really nice. Overall, I'm going to say this is an excellent coffee cigar. I don't know if I necessarily recommend having a booze with this of any kind, or if anything, maybe, well, maybe a whiskey, maybe rum. Overall, though, I'd say probably the best drink pairing with this would probably be coffee or some kind of coffee liqueur or cocktail. Yes, the breeze is kicking up. Thank you for blowing a little cool all over my mic. Oh, one of the things I've been wanting to touch on, but I keep spacing out, because for some reason, everybody in the brother's uncle, second cousin, twice removed, has been walking the dog, riding the bike, out for a run, and basically just being a pest. <laughs> but anyway, uh, at first, I noticed that this band, I thought it was black, just a black version of the Monte Cristo. I get it out in the sunlight, it's midnight blue, which I didn't notice until I actually got it outside, which was kind of weird. I thought it was just kind of a neat little note to point out. It's uh, kind of working on this whole uh, midnight theme. And uh, it's not just the Monte Cristo line that's doing this, it's also, I think, Romeo and Juliet, uh, Romeo and Juliet, um, H. Upman, a couple other brands. So far, I haven't noticed any further issues with tar in the, uh, the cut which is good. And the draw definitely lo loosened up quite a bit. Well, anyway, so far going pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bands off and uh, update right at the nub. All right, this is like a good point to do a final update. Right at the nub before everything burns out and just starts tasting like hot yuck. So far I've noticed that the flavors have been pretty consistent throughout. It started off with a little bit of a cinnamony spice to it, developing into very strong coffee notes, a little bit of a cocoa, not so much sweet, but still very good. Excellent cigar for coffee. I can definitely recommend a coffee with this. Not so sure I'd recommend anything else, truth be told. Overall though, pretty good cigar. I will say that I have had some issues though, and the big one being, for some reason, it still seems to be wanting to tar. Just a quick note on tar. The actual tar that you find in a cigar is not tar, tar. That's asphalt. Uh, the tar that you find, quote unquote tar, is actually just the uh, melted plant resins from the actual cellular walls of the tobacco leaf. So they end up mixing with the smoke and the oils and all the other gunk and they end up just kind of coagulating into this brown gunk that is bitter, nasty, and absolutely disgusting. And always a horrible way to end any good cigar. To get a big block of that on your teeth, on your tongue, stuck to your lips, whatever. So normally when that happens, it's usually because the tobacco hasn't been fermented long enough. And this is Monte Cristo, but it's kind of a weird case because the whole media noche thing is kind of shared across a couple of different brands. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe this, I'm thinking maybe this brand, this line from the Monte Cristo line, uh, this line from the Monte Cristo brand, eventually I'll figure that out how to actually articulate that. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm thinking this may be a separate project from the typical Monte Cristo because mostly, you know, there's a reason why Monte Cristo is one of the uh, top selling brands like in history and has been around for like forever and a day. There's a reason why there's a Monte Cristo lounge in Las Vegas. It's because they are good, they make a lot of money, and they can afford to do that because they are that popular. This me and you though, it's, it's good, don't get me wrong. But I'm wondering why I'm getting so much tar out of this. I don't know, maybe I just cut it stupid, which is always a possibility. I don't think I did. Anyway, 
Excellent coffee cigar. Uh, these might be a little on the pricey side because they are Monte Cristos. Monte Cristos typically run in the triple digit price range, as in you're pretty much not going to get these for under 100 bucks. Like any Monte Cristo in a box. I said onesie twosies. Yeah, definitely pick one up and check them out. Other than that, that's pretty much all I got to say about this. Smooth, consistent cigar, no harshness, excellent with coffee. Other than that, that's pretty much all I got. If you like this video or any other video, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Other than that, yeah, that's it. I'll see you next time.